Let's talk about then what it means for a function to be differentiable. What, is this, what does this mean if a function is differentiable? Well, really, a function is differentiable at a point, x0, just say, at a specific point, if the derivative exists. So basically, a function is differentiable if you can take the derivative at that point. What does it mean to take the derivative? It means that that limit as x, sorry, as limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, so if that limit exists at x equals x naught, then we would say the function is differentiable. And obviously then if the derivative of the function does not exist at x naught, then we would say x naught is a point of non-differentiability. And you can see whoever designed Microsoft Office OneNote was not a calculus student because they don't like the word non-differentiability in there. I wonder if they'd like it, maybe if I hyphenated it. Add it to the dictionary? Oh, I see. Well, they like, they, they're okay with that. We'll do the little, <laughs> we'll do the little hyphen thing. There we go. Okay. So, here are some examples of some points of non-differentiability. This first graph that I've got here, we would not be able to take the derivative at this point here, x0, because it's a corner point. And so if you were to try to find the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, what would it be? Would it be this? Would it be this? Maybe it's even this. There is no slope of the tangent at a corner point. So corner points are places where an example of a function would be non-differentiable. Here's a situation here where we would not be able to take the derivative because what is the slope of the tangent line right here? The slope is in infinity. It's a vertical line. So places where the slope is infinity we would say that limit does not exist because infinity is not a finite number. Therefore, that function is not differentiable where the tangent line is vertical. And then obviously we'd have a problem here at places where the function is not continuous. We cannot take the derivative at x0 because we have a gap in our function. So there's three examples of places in functions where we could not take the derivative. Corner points, places of vertical tangency, and places where our function is not continuous. Okay, where there's, there's been gaps. So here's a proof. Uh, show that the function y equals the absolute value of x plus 3 is not differentiable at x equals minus 3. So we're going to prove that this function is not continuous. And I think... Probably you know enough about functions now from Math 12 that you would realize that this is the absolute value function, which looks like this, but it's been moved left 3. So if we can imagine moving it left 3, it would look something like this. And when x is minus 3, this would be a place where we have a corner point, so it would not be continuous. Or sorry, not be differentiable. But let's mathematically prove that this function is not differentiable at the point x equals minus 3. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take the function y equals the absolute value of x plus 3 and split it up into piecewise form so we can identify the different components of the, of the function. So writing this function in piecewise form, the graph of y equals the absolute value of x plus 3 is made up of these two lines right here. So looking at this line, this is the line y equals simply x plus 3. We will not need those absolute values for x values greater than or equal to negative 3. Because if x is greater than or equal to negative 3, then what's in the absolute value is going to be positive. For instance, if x is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, we don't need those absolute value signs. Okay, so this line here, x plus 3, would represent this one here. For x values that are less than 
oops, less than minus 3. Then our expression x plus 3 would need to be multiplied by minus 1 to make it positive. Okay, multiplying the equation by negative 1 would make it positive. So simplifying this up a little bit, we have y equals x plus 3 for x values greater than or equal to minus 3. And we have negative x minus 3 for x values less than minus 3. And negative x minus 3 would represent this line segment right there. Okay, so there's an absolute value function expressed in piecewise form so that it's easy for us to take the derivative. So let's do this now. Show that the function is not differentiable at x equals minus 3. Then what we need to do is show that the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f prime of x, that's the slope, is not equal to the limit as x approaches minus 3, oops, that was from the left, from the right of the derivative. So we need to find the, the equations of the tangent lines, the derivatives, and evaluate the slopes of those as we approach negative 3 from the left and negative 3 from the right. So let's do this. The limit as x approaches, well, first we've got to find out from a prime of x. Let's do that. So f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, which is limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h plus 3 minus x plus 3 all over h. So limit as x of h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, here it is. I'm just taking, I'm doing this one right here. Let's call this number 1. And then over here we'll do equation number 2 because we do have two parts, right? So finding the slope of the tangent line for the slope formula here. This one works out really nice because we have limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h plus 3 minus x minus 3 all over h. And these x's are going to cancel out and the 3's are going to cancel out. And we are simply going to get h over h. And h divided by h is, of course, 1. Actually, we won't circle that because that can be confusing. So what we have shown is that the slope of our line x plus 3 is always 1 for all x values. So even if we would now try to substitute in negative 3, we don't need to because there's no x. The slope's always 1. And we can see that, right? When we look back at our graph here, what's the slope of this line? It's 1 for all values of x. That's why there's no x in there. Looking at our second equation, though, we would now have f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, putting x plus h in here now for, the, for x is minus bracket x plus h minus 3 minus f of x plus h, sorry, f of x, which is, ooh, this is a tough one. This is a neat example. Look at all those negative signs. You got to be really, really, really careful with your sign. So f of x plus h, I would put x plus h in for x. So negative bracket x plus h, there it is, negative x plus h, minus 3, minus 3. Then we need to subtract f of x. So subtract f of x, which is this formula here. So notice all, all the brackets that have been put in there because I need to subtract all of f of x. So be really careful when you're working the formula out with all your signs. So this would now be the limit as h approaches 0 of negative x minus h minus 3. Minus a minus x makes for a plus x, and minus a minus 3 makes for a plus 3. All over h. And there go our x's, and there go our 3's. So we are left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative h over h, which is negative 1. Are the slopes the same from the left and the right? 
So we would say f of x, the function, that function, is not differentiable at x equals negative 3 since the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f prime of x from the left did not equal the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right of f prime of x. Not differentiable. So here's, here's, some, here's a neat question where we can give some information, given some information, draw the graph of a function. So we're told that for this function, f of 2 is equal to 3. We're told that f prime of 2 is equal to 0. And that f prime of x is more than 0 if x is less than 2. And f prime of x is less than 0 if x is greater than 2. So given all that information there, we can come up with a sketch that will represent approximately what this function will look like. Certainly its general shape. It won't be exact, but we can do that. What is the first thing there? f of 2 equals 3. What is that giving us? A specific point. It's saying when x is 2, y is 3. We can do that. This is a stupid graph. Let's get rid of that. It's not lined up on my grid coordinates. Oops, that's not a graph either. Give me a graph. Hey, give me a graph. Thank you. Sometimes you got to speak sternly to the computer. Okay, there's a graph that more or less is lined up. Let's put a couple of points on it. So it's saying when x is 2, y is 3. That was a point. That's great. So there's our point right there. So, so far, there's our graph. We did that. f prime of 2 equals 0. What does f prime mean? Slope, slope of the tangent. It's a derivative. So what it's, it's saying that the slope at 2 is 0, <coughs> meaning what? It means it's got to be horizontal, right? So my graph is going to be doing something like this near that point 2 when x is 2. So we've got a flat, flat part. Then it says that the slope, f prime of x, again, slope is positive for x values that are less than 2. Now what does that mean if the slope is positive? Yes, it would have to go up to the right. We would say things that do this have positive slopes. Things that do this have a slope of 0. And things that do this have negative slopes, right? Remember that from Math 10, positive. So again, Math 10 coming back here. So the slope is greater than 0 if x is less than 2. That means our graph's got to be doing something like this. Now, we don't know exactly what it's doing. It could be you know, kind of coming up on a nice curve. It might be a real steep line here. We don't know that much. But generally, it's going to be doing something like that. And then it's telling us that the slope is less than 0 if x is greater than 2. So once we get more than 2, then this thing's got to be going down. So it could very much be a, an upside-down problem. Or it could be an upside-down absolute value function. Well, not exactly, because it's got to be flat up here, right? And we know that absolute values are not differentiable at that point. So it's, it's got to be kind of a rounded curve here or a straight line. So looking at this last example, we're going to do two graphs. We'll call this graph graph A, and this is going to be graph B. These are the graphs of some functions here. So this is y equals f of x. We need to sketch the graph of the derivative, f prime of x. What does f prime of x represent? Slope. So what's it exactly? So this question is saying... What would the graph of the slope of the tangent line look like? Remember when Math 12, when we were doing functions like reciprocals, and you started on the left, and you took the reciprocal of this value, and you plotted it, and you 
took this point, took the reciprocal, and you plot it and then connected all the dots. We're going to do the same thing here. It's just like another transformation, except we're going to be graphing the slopes of the tangent lines. So let's pull uh, a red pen out. And what would be approximately, just ballpark, what would be approximately the slope of the tangent line right here at this point? Imagine a slope here. Yeah, it might be about one, right? The slope of the t line tangent here might be might be about one. So I would go up here and put a dot at one. What's the slope right here? What's the slope of the tangent line at this point, say? Yeah, one. What about here? One, 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 one. These are all going to be slopes of one. What's the slope of the tangent line here? Zero. And here? So these are all going to be zero. So our, our slope graph will look like this. Now what's the slope say here? Here. Yeah, it's supposed to be a straight line there, more or less. So we could basically say it's negative one. This is a stupid graph too. It wasn't on the grid axis. You know why? I know why that was because I added some spaces and it moved it all down. I wonder if I, I wonder if that would work. Let's, let's see if this will work here. Can I add some more space? Oh, there. Yeah, that's pretty close. It's not perfectly lined up anymore, but close. So negative one is the slope right here. So right here. And if we assume that this black graph goes, does go down forever, then we can assume that this goes off page here too. So the red graph would represent the slopes of the tangent lines to our black curve. Let's try the next one here. What's the slope here about? Right here. Yeah, zero, 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 zero. What's the slope here? One. So at this point right here, we might go with the slope of one. What's the slope here? Back to zero. So our graph's going to kind of come along like this. And then the slope goes back to zero. What's our slope here? Give or take. But it would be negative because it's going down, right? So at this point right here, if we say the slope of the tangent is minus one, minus one. Maybe here it's even minus two, right? Getting a little steeper. Let's go with minus two. But what's the slope now back here, say? Right here might be about minus one. So we'll go, we'll move that point up to minus one. And then now what's the slope here? Yeah. Zero. <laughs> so at this point we'll move back up here to zero. And what's the slope here, say? One. One. Positive one, sure. Let's go with positive one. And what's the slope here about? back down to zero. So those there would be a sketch as you move from left to right of the slopes of the tangent lines to the curve.